As you drive into the Jasper town site coming from the east, surrounded by the majestic Rocky Mountains of Jasper National Park, one of the first accommodations you'll come across will be the Marmot Lodge. From the outside, it doesn't really stand out as anything glamorous or fancy. Its architecture is certainly dated, but that's not to say it's in any way bad. It's an older establishment for sure. I found some newspaper clippings from 1971 advertising a two-night stay at the hotel, including two days of skiing at Marmot Basin, all for 38 bucks. Back then, it was referred to as the Marmot Motor Lodge. I love how we used to include the name motor in accommodation titles, just because they happen to be close to a major motorway. I don't know why, but I love the names Motor Lodge and Motor Inn. However, the Motor Lodge got with the times and dropped the qualifier motor some time ago. And despite the hotel's age and somewhat retro-styled architecture, I actually quite like it. Its simple layout and color scheme fits perfectly in a mountain town. And the rooms themselves are far more modern, while still holding on to some of that mountain cottage styling, including things like bare wood columns and a stone-framed natural gas fireplace. Marmot Lodge's King Suite was a perfect choice for our family. With a separate main bedroom, containing the previously described king-size bed, the suite offers enough space for the kids to chill on the couch while mom and dad can unwind on their own. After a long day of running around doing all the great things you can do in Jasper, it's nice to have a little room to relax. And for some extra privacy, mom and dad can retreat to the bedroom's attached balcony. It is small and quite weathered, but nonetheless, it offers an excellent place to just sit, relax, and smell that mountain air. The fold-out couch, located in the room's living area, offers the suite's second set of sleeping accommodations. Unfortunately, like virtually all fold-out couches, it really isn't all that comfortable. Young kids won't have much to complain about because of how light they are, but once someone with any real weight to them, like me for example, tries to lie down on the fold-out bed, well, anyone who's had to sleep on one of these knows just how uncomfortable they can be. Still, having said that, for my family, there were no complaints. We stayed in this room for a full seven nights, and the kids not once mentioned any issues with the bed or comfort. We all slept soundly after our daily adventures in Jasper. The room includes a small but robust kitchenette, including all the appliances needed to feed a hungry family. A stove and oven, toaster, microwave oven, coffee maker, though we usually bring our own, and a lot of storage space for all of Dad's junk food, and a large enough fridge for everything else. The one thing we're missing here is a dishwasher, so you will need to clean all of the included kitchenware by hand. And here's a tip. Always wash them yourself the first time, even if they look clean. It's just a good idea. For in-room entertainment, the room features two 40-inch televisions, each with their own Shaw cable box. But here's a pro tip for traveling. Bring along your own Roku or Amazon Fire Stick. That way, when the last episode of Loki comes out, you're all set and you can watch it that night. The network speeds offered through the lodge's Marmot Wi-Fi are actually quite reasonable, as far as hotel connections go anyway and all of our devices enjoyed a good connection throughout the grounds of the hotel. And that includes the Marmot Lodge's pool area. Open from 8 a.m. till 10 p.m. daily, the pool might be a little simplistic, but it's still a great amenity. The large rectangular pool, like most others, has steps leading into a shallow end, and the pool floor slopes towards a deeper end, which was deep enough for my eight-year-old son to barely touch the floor. The pool water seems to be heated, but only slightly. It's not really warm, but it lacks that chill you get when you hop into an unheated pool, even one kept indoors. Honestly, it was pretty much the perfect temperature. I just wish I had a thermometer so I could know what temperature that was. The adjacent Whirlpool is also really nice, and it is kept at a sweltering 104 degrees. That's the maximum amount of heat that a hot tub should be set at, at least according to many hot tub manufacturers. And its large footprint is nice, it offers plenty of room to stretch out. Just like the rooms, the pool area has definitely been renovated over the years. The attractive tiling set around the pool floor and extending up to the walls themselves makes for a pleasant poolside environment, especially when paired with the area's plants and overhead skylights. The experience is topped off with a large 110 degree dry heat sauna, authentically heated with rocks and emitting that real wood smell. 
it's definitely nice to have. The area's change rooms are small, but adequate, and they house a single shower stall. Like I said, it's simplistic, but it does the trick. Outside, you'll find one last relaxation amenity, the covered outdoor hot tub. Like the rest of the hotel, it's a little dated, but it must have been well maintained because it works flawlessly. Now, in the near plus 30 degree days that we were there, it was a little much to sit in an outdoor hot tub in that heat, but I expect the experience would be a lot nicer during one of Jasper's cold Canadian winters. Moving on, I wish I could talk about the dining options available at the hotel, but unfortunately during our stay, the restaurant was closed. Best I can tell, it was in the middle of a rebranding. Google Maps told me that it was going to be the Fireside Lounge, and Emperor's Steakhouse apparently. But as I walked around the building, all I could see were coming soon signs for Evil Dave's, which appears to be a relocation of an existing and well-reviewed restaurant in Jasper. So that's probably a plus, considering the Fireside Lounge reviews were less than lackluster. So since I don't have any food to speak of at this location, I'll just mention L&W Restaurant. Their dining room is awesome. They have real trees throughout and they surround the tables. I love their Spanakapita and Chicken Souvlaki. I would highly recommend them. But getting back to the hotel, that's really all I can say about the Marmot Lodge. Everything else is fairly inconsequential. The lobby is nice and it has a little selection of maps and booklets. The hotel has ice and well-stocked vending machines which accept all major credit cards. Another nice to have. One thing I did notice was how quiet the rooms were. I half expected to hear traffic, as the hotel is right on the main drag coming into the Jasper Town site. But our evenings on the balcony were quite peaceful, and they stayed that way throughout the night. The views are nice, and the grounds themselves are all really well maintained. I don't really review stuff like this all that often, so I'm not going to give this hotel any rating per se. I just wanted to share how our stay was, and perhaps help others to know what to expect from the Marmot Lodge. So, on a scale from Lake Annette to the Jasper Tramway, I give this hotel Athabasca Falls, and would feel comfortable giving it my recommendation to anyone looking for a pleasant stay in Jasper National Park. If you enjoyed this video, why not subscribe? Oh, and please check out my main channel, all about West Edmonton Mall, its iconic history, and all the cool stuff that it has and used to have. Thank you so much for watching.